How was life designed to be lived? Where do we find hope with temptations, relationships, sufferings, money problems, and tribulations? We went back to the Bible to find real answers to real questions. We actually found that the scripture pages and our real life is one and the same. In this program, and with His Grace Bishop Yusuf, you will be able to know God better. You will be able to take Him to every situation you encounter. Please join us in this journey to discover the way, the truth, and the life. FAQ New York Times, Sunday, 8. 45 p.m. Rerun Thursday 8.45 p.m. Sydney time Monday 8.45 p.m. Rerun Friday 8.45 p.m. Funny Business New York Time Sunday 5 10 p.m. Rerun Saturday 5 10 p.m. Sydney Time Monday 5 10 p.m. Rerun Friday 5 10 p.m. CYC Christian Youth Channel Hello and welcome to Live with Abuna. As always, we're joined by a priest for um, discussion on the questions that are troubling you um, about being Coptic Orthodox, about being a Christian in a very atheist world. Um, if you've got any questions that you want Abuna Suriel to answer today, um, we encourage you to write to us on 0416 551 292, that number again 0416 551 292, or write to us on Twitter, the handle is at CYC Now, or hop on Facebook and send us a post at Christian Youth Channel. Abuna Surreal joins us from St. Anthony and St. Paul's Church in Guildford. Welcome, Abuna. Nice to be here. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to start off with a question. From one of our viewers, they're asking, how do we prayerfully help friends get away from bad influences that are destroying their lives and bring them back to God? It's, it's very important not to judge them. Uh, friendship is a very valued thing between uh, people. And uh, when we look up to them or at least uh, uh, acknowledge them uh, as, as a friend to us, uh, we can then appreciate each other's company. Obviously, people get uh, pulled away from relationships by negative influences. So you have to be a positive influence to them. Don't enforce uh, anything upon them, being genuine in the way you communicate with them on a regular basis, and uh, not looking for ulterior motives behind wanting to bring them back to Christ. At the end of the day, most importantly, is Christ is the one that changes the hearts of people. Your connection with Christ is so important because this will make this 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 virtually fixes most of the problem. So the first thing to do is actually pray for that person by placing the person's name on the altar. 
Utilize the altar is very, very important. Secondly, light a candle. They say the, longest the, 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 the longer the candle, the longer the prayer. Ask for the intercessions of the saints. So the first important priority is always bring the name of the person before Christ and his altar. And, that really, and then most importantly, constantly pray for that person. The thing is, is also, it's, the second point is, is that we have to be in constant communication with them. On a day-to-day -day basis, send them the, day, the, the verse of the day or the saying of the day. Uh, constantly be in contact with them, asking you about how they're going generally. Meet them with a, for a cup of, uh, cup of hot chocolate somewhere. Uh, be in constant uh, reach to them at, constant, at, at all times. So what did you mean by saying don't approach them with ulterior motives? Because isn't our motive always to bring them to God? Sure, but sometimes people just may do that because I, I want to be seen as a perfect, a per, a perfect Christian to bring mm -hmm. people to, to Christ or to bring glory for myself. If you bring Christ to the people, if you bring Christ through your day, uh, to people, that's when people will accept him in, 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 in their day-to-day -day life. So uh, be natural because you can't contain uh, Christ's, you can't contain Christ's uh, uh, fragrance within you. It comes out naturally. Mm -hmm. So your connection with Christ and his altar is what's going to bring that person back to Christ. You are just the intermediate person. Don't connect them to yourself, connect them to Christ and his altar. If there's an opportunity, get him to get that person to attend a youth meeting on a Friday night or uh, even attend, I believe there is uh, different services like um, Coco's who serve the homeless or St. Paul's Mission. Uh, just some, these services give them an opportunity to be able to share just basic um, qualities that they may have within them. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is this is gives them an opportunity to be able to, to to be to be to be able to offer what services they can to others. Christ, when he went to visit the Samaritan woman, he, he knew all about her. But then he said to her, "Look, you came to drink from Jacob's well, but you are looking for the living water. What's wrong with the tap water in your own house?" She was looking for that living water, which was Christ Himself, and Christ met her at the well of Jacob. And she opened up and she spoke, but he just found an opportunity for her to open up. When she opened up, Christ was able to then make her feel comfortable. And when he made her feel comfortable, she was then, uh, she then basically started to speak or answer his question, where is your husband? And eventually, as we know, she repented, confessed, and then she went back to uh, Samaria and preached in Samaria. And then she even brought others to Christ and, and uh, she, she died actually as a martyr, and her name, her name was St. Potimi. So what we have to do is look for the positives in people. Don't highlight the negatives. Look for the positive and work on it. And this is the key to the heart of that person, to run through the guidance of Christ and the church and your confession, Father. And Jesus is obviously the best example, a perfect example of being able to mix with um, non-Christians still treat them like lovingly and without judgment. That's right. Um, how do we, as obviously weaker beings, draw that line? Like how do we connect with people that are outside of our community? Um, and how do we know the limits to that connection before, before we're in a state where we're like too far from God? Uh, from what I understand from the question, uh, with relation to people that are non-Christians, mm -hmm. uh, live Christianity, live Christian orthodoxy in your day-to-day -day life. The way you speak, the way you present yourself, mm -hmm. the way you, the way you, um, yeah, even in even in Facebook these days, like uh, don't don't forget who you are and who you belong to. You're the you're the prince, so you're the princess of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You're an ambassador for Christ. So the way you speak, the way you um, dress in a modest way, the, may, the way you're able to resolve issues um, on a day-to-day -day basis, people can see that and they see it often when you're not looking and they appreciate who you are and what, that, what they want to be able to taste who that, that Christ, that spirit that is working within you. Because Christianity in itself is a um, very distinct, uh, uh, um, it's, it's not a thought, it's a way of life. And people want, when they see that, that those qualities within you, they want to be, um, they want to be, uh, they want to know more about this Christ. 
And you don't need to, it's always good to know uh, the differences between uh, uh, Christi Christians and, and Protestants, Christians and, and Hinduism, Christians and, and Mormonism, and, and, these, and, and, and uh, these different religions. And thank God, he saw, uh, the late Pope Shenouda III wrote many books, and there is a book by them, it's called Comparative Religions. Mm -hmm. And Sayyidina Baba spoke about the difference between orthodoxy and Hinduism, orthodoxy and Protestants, orthodoxy, uh, and uh, you know the different religions. And it's good to have some knowledge about these different religions, so that when if a person does ask you a question, you're not going to bombard them with 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 with, with you're not going to Bible bash them, but you're going to speak with knowledge, with background knowledge. And it's just a matter of time where where you just give out those seeds, those words of wisdom, the words of, the words of uh, understanding, just a spirit, the natural spirit that come from you, then people will appreciate who you are and want to know more about this Christ. Mm. And on that point, people wanting to know more about Christ because you're an example of it, um, what about when they don't? What about when they completely reject it because it's so unfamiliar, it's so foreign to them that they don't accept that you're sincere because they don't know sincerity? Look, um, as we as we drive as we drive on t uh, streets today, we come across many intersections, mm -hmm. intersections, and we give way to many people. All right, so Christ is always going to allow a person to come across you, right? So the way you're able to deal with that person, what word you're going to give that person, the way you, 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 you like what I'm what I'm trying to say is that the way you present yourself to that person and what you're able to offer mm -hmm. that person at that time will be sufficient for that person to take it on. It's like a seed. You throw the seeds of righteousness, what you've, uh, and that, then don't wait for it to germinate because it's not your responsibility. It is responsibility. All you do is you are a delivery person. You just mm -hmm. deliver that verse, deliver that smile, deliver that word of comfort. And at the end of the day, as the person progresses in life, is going to start to change. You will make an influence. You you make a change in a person, a positive change. And the good thing also that if you don't see a change in that person, then you won't. Yani, yeah, when you do see a change, you'll always give the glory to yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. So so if you just deliver that parcel to that person, and then leave Christ the one to allow uh, allow that 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 thing to to to, to grow within that person. Okay, let's move on. Mm -hmm. um, there's a question from another viewer asking, why is it wrong for a woman to marry her deceased husband's brother? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, <laughs> it's like your own. Why is it, why, why is it a woman? Yeah. yeah, why is it wrong for a woman to marry her deceased husband's brother? So. It's her brother. Yeah, agreed. Okay. <laughs> uh, and, Saint, and even St. John the Baptist also said, what, uh, it is not lawful for you to marry your, 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 your mm -hmm. brother's wife brother's wife. Yeah. She is like your uh, your sister or your brother. Yes. Mm. Next question. Is our church a man-made construction and is it possible that it may have traditions, we've lost the question, um, that it may have traditions that are socially constructed instead of divinely prescribed? Our church is not made by bricks and mortar. Mm -hmm. Each member of the church is a part of the body of Christ and Christ is the head of the church. Christ, before, during this time between the, between the resurrection and the ascension, Christ uh, continually taught his disciples on how he wanted his people to follow him. And uh, this is very important to understand that our Lord is not a Lord of confusion. You understand, he, he left a book which is called well, the writings which are called the Discalia on how he wants the church to, to, be, uh, to be led by his apostles. So um, the beauty of the, the, the Orthodox Church today is that everything is biblically based. And then whenever there is a discussion that arises in today in modern society, this discussion will be always presented before the Holy Senate by, our, by the guidance of, the, of His Holiness Pope Tuadros uh, and uh, also the bishops. There are over a hundred bishops that will sit and discuss these issues. So nothing is answered haphazardly. Everything is answered with prayer, always going back to the Bible as a source of reference, as a source of, uh, of uh, our foundation to our question, answering our questions. 
and also about going back to the traditions also. Um, the next question is, why isn't there a sense of urgency for unity between the Eastern Orthodox and Oriental Orthodox churches? Where are we in the process? Uh, we are always in dialogue between churches. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember seeing a very old photo between His Holiness Pope Shunud III and uh, the Pope of Rome. So um, the Church of Alexandria went to visit Rome and having that communication and dialogue, we're getting very close to each other. Um, the Orthodox, the Eastern and Oriental Orthodox, there is dialogue mm -hmm. between us on a constant basis. And uh, it's just a matter of time where we will be hopefully be able to be um, in, in, in communion. In communion. Um, and doesn't that already exist in some facets, like in marriage, if someone's married to a Greek Orthodox person, for example, then... Oh, oh, the, we, we always have to go back to... Um, yeah. uh, we have to always sit with the couple mm -hmm. and we, we talk with them and we'll see what their background is and then take them on a step-by-step -step, um, basis on what the requirements are to fulfill that right to proceed on to the sacrament of marriage. Mm -hmm. Um, on to baptism, which mm -hmm. usually follows <laughs> marriage. Um, why do some people dress their baby boy as a bishop or priest on their baptism day? Shouldn't they just dress in white like baby girls? It's a celebration. Mm -hmm. Celebration. And uh, who knows? Who knows? Maybe one day that person will become a, a bishop or a, or, a, or, a, uh, or the future patriarch. Who knows? So um, it's more of a, a joyous celebration where we want... We, 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 we want to array our child with that glamorous, um, the glamorous uh, crown and the, and, and the coat because of our happiness and joy. But the, most, uh, the, the best array, uh, the, best, the best cloth that we put on is when we, when, we, when we take off the old man, which is the original sin, Adam and Eve, and we put on the new Christ, which is the, 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 the bond of perfection the cloak of Christ within us. Um, final question before we head to a break is, I am not doing well spiritually. Although I attend church services, read the Holy Bible, etc., I do not feel any spiritual consolation and my faith is growing weaker every day. Can you help? Um, it's very important to, when you are in the liturgy, liturgy holds a lot of mysteries behind it. So when you come, don't come to the church to socialize. Come and meet your creator face to face. Come with your problems. Each one of us is carrying a cross and uh, the only physician is our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ. Christ said, come to me who labor and heavy laden, I'll give you what? I'll rest. give you rest. That's a promise that Christ made to each one of his children. So it's just, it, 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 we're just so close. It doesn't take much to be able to connect to Christ. So when you're actually in focus of the icon, in focus of the tunes, and connecting in the liturgy, holding the liturgy book, or holding your agbeya, and trying to keep focus, as if you're the only person within the church itself, there's no way on earth that you'll not be able to be touched by, uh, um, uh, by Christ and the message. So it's, a, it's totally up to myself, right? If I want to come to the banquet, if I am I am, if I am hungry and thirsty for the word of, Christ, word of God, I will come and he will prepare a banquet for me and, I, it will, and I'll be for sure filled. There's also another thing also, when you do come before the presence of Christ, whether it be in your room, whether it be in church, uh, in fellowship, you may come empty handed, but you, uh, but you will definitely not leave without a special gift. You came physically, even though you didn't come spiritually, you came physically. Because you were there physically, Christ will grant you a special, special what, special gift. And the beauty of experiencing um, uh, Christ in the liturgy, today we have the 2D and 3D and so-called so 4G. I call it the 5D experience. So when we come into the church, the house of God, you experience Christ in the five dimensions. The first is what? The first is sight. When you enter the house of God, you see the icons, you see one of the deacons, you see the altar. The second thing you see, you see, the second sense, the first is sight, the second is smell. The first thing you smell is what? Huh? The bahur, incense. the incense. And the incense is the prayers that are being raised up to our Lord. 
And the third thing is, as we were children, our parents used to pick us up and take the blessing of an icon, asking for the intercessions of this particular saint. So touch is the, is the third dimension. The fourth dimension is what? Taste, which is the ultimate one. Whoever eats my body and drinks my blood worthily, meaning what? Very important to repent, sit with yourself at home. And, and evaluate your day-to-day your, 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 your -day life. Confession is so important also, because when you sit with your confession, Father, you're able to let out everything. Don't hold anything within, because that particular sin could be the obstacle or the, um, the, the wall that is between you and Rabbin himself. And then obviously have the solution to the problem and the absolution, and then go straight to, to have the body and blood of Christ, even though uh, we can never be ready but most important, we take the steps of repentance, feeling sorry for what we've done, confession, sit with your confession, Father, and talk with him, and then go for the ultimate um, uh, blessing, which is to receive his holy body and the sacred blood. So we said sight, and then smell, sight, seeing everything. Smell is the bukhur. Taste is the, is what? The, the body and blood of Christ. Um, touch, the icons, take the blessings of the uh, intercessions of the saints. And the last one is what? Hearing, the tisabiyah. Right, the prayers, the tizbaha, the responses that are said during the liturgy, that is the 5D experience. So don't come, even though if you come physically, say, Lord, enough is enough. You have to talk to him in, in simple language. Don't complicate your words. Lord, I've come to see you at your house. Right? And I'll tell you something, whenever you come, especially when you stand up in prayer, when you're in the liturgy, a thousand and one things will start to distract you. Thousand one things. Do the sign of the cross and say, My Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon me for I have sinned against you. O Lord, allow me to focus on you and allow me to, to gain a blessing from you. Ishmani, the Samaritan woman came and you gave her a blessing. Ishmani, the, 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 the woman that had an infirmity for 12 years, she dived at your feet and just grabbed your garment. Allow me, O Lord, to taste, to see, to smell touch and to feel your presence in my life you will not be you will not leave empty-handed 100 percent guaranteed on that note we hope you're hearing seeing and understanding plenty at the moment we're about to throw to a break um, and in the meantime can you guys please send us your questions to 0416-551-292 that number again 0416-551-292 we'll be back soon <laughs> The church is a place where everyone feels comfortable, that are happy to dwell in that blessed place. The church doors are always open for everyone. As soon as we close or shut out people in any way, and they feel a lack of, of love within the community, it's a closed door. God accepts everyone. Anytime. It's very important to say to God that I have sinned before you. The Lord Christ opens the doors through the sacraments. The Holy Spirit is, we call him the omnipotent. He is sovereign. God is sovereign. He works and He acts and He doesn't need to take permission from people. The heaven is a multicultural place. Church that connects with the people on a very human level. Open Doors, new show only on CYC. Open Doors, New York Time, Saturday, 6 p.m. Rerun, Wednesday, 6 p.m. Sydney Time, Sunday, 6 p.m. Rerun, Thursday, 6 p.m. Can you be Christian and involved in science? How does God reveal himself to people through his creation and nature? Let there be light. The things that keep us alive are mentioned specifically. If you are interested in creation issues, the early life, and the evolution theory, we have a planet that appears to have been made just for us. You will find your questions answers in this creation and evolution show. Watch it 
soon on CYC. Creation and Evolution Show. New York Time, Friday, 6 p.m. Rerun, Tuesday, 6 p.m. Sydney Time, Saturday, 6 p.m. Rerun, Wednesday, 6 p.m. If you struggle with pornography sins, you try to overcome it and fail many times. Only porn gives me some pleasure. This show presents you practical ways to get rid of pornography addiction. We answered some of your questions in the first season and we are waiting for your questions to be answered in this coming new season. Why I am wrong? I don't hurt anyone on earth. Please don't hesitate to send us your problem on this email. Triumph at cycnow.com The case of today God is there for you to help you overcome sin and reach the triumph. Share us your problem and wait for the reply soon on CYC. Triumph. New York Times, Saturday, 8.30 p.m. Rerun, Wednesday, 8.30 p.m. Sydney Time, Sunday, 8.30 p.m. Rerun, Thursday, 8.30 p.m. CYC Christian Youth Channel. Welcome back to Live with Abuna on CYC. We're chatting to Abuna Surial from St. Anthony and St. Paul's Church in Guildford. Um, I hope you're sending in your questions to 0416 551 292 or writing to us on Twitter. The handle is at CYC now or head to Facebook and write to us at Christian Youth Channel. I'm going to go straight into one of our favourite topics, it's marriage. Um, and the question is, is putting a person in our mind for marriage during teenage years wrong? Uh, no, certainly not. As long as your thoughts are pure thoughts, uh, that's, that's very important. But uh, to admire the, the, the opposite gender is, 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 is perfectly natural. Uh, but to, to admire them in a pure way is the priority. Uh, and eventually, as we grow up in Sunday school and youth uh, groups and so forth, we get to know more about that person from a distance. So, uh, and then eventually, if it's if it's God's will, then then the the actual road will become a bit more narrower, and we'll get to and later on later on, let it not be an excuse to say, well, no, well, you're you're allowing boyfriend and girlfriend. No, we know we don't allow boyfriend and girlfriend relationships. Sorry to say. Uh, Amber Musa said something beautiful. He said, you're okay to have boyfriends and girlfriends. Why? Because it's okay to have male friends and female friends. But the problem is, is when you knock the last letter off boyfriend, the S of the boyfriend, that is the issue. And it's, uh, it's to open a door, to have, a fr to have friends as uh, males and females is very important. This is day-to-day -day life. Uh, but then to uh, single out a particular person. This is not a friendship, this is more going into a relationship. So you need a, a, fi I call it a five pin code to open the door of a relationship. Firstly, you need to be what uh, uh, physically mature, to be able to know the difference, and wise, and know the difference between what is right, what is right, what is wrong, what is accepted before God, what is rejected before God, what is going to be accepted by my parents, my family, you know, my, 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 my confession father. So wisdom, mature, thinking maturely is very important. Second thing, your spiritual life. Always connect with your confession father. Always go back to, that, to, to your confession father to seek guidance. And your spiritual relationship between you and Robin is so important. Your day-to-day -day prayers and, and so forth. And the, the third thing is academic. You have to at least have come to a, to a point where you've nearly finished your academic life because you need to concentrate on certain priorities. 
And every relationship, obviously, you need to buy her a gift. Girls know the quality of the gift, where it comes from, whether it's a $2 shop or from Myers or something. Mm -hmm. So that's important also, that when you do buy a gift, you buy it not because of its cost, you buy it because it's, it's, you've put thought behind it. Right? And at the end of the day, you don't want to uh, exhaust your resources. And the third thing is differentiate emotional, differentiate between love and lust. Mm -hmm. To open the door of a relationship, you need to be physically mature, wise. Secondly, you must have a, um, a strong spiritual, con you, you must be constantly in spiritual connection with Rabbina in the church and following the commandments. The third thing is academic, finish your academic life, you know. Uh, it's very important to concentrate on your books than to concentrate on a particular guy or a particular girl because that's what's going to delay you in finishing and get your academic, uh, you're, you're getting your title, your paper. And uh, the fourth thing is uh, finances. Obviously, you need to buy the gift. And the fifth thing is emotion. Difference between love and lust. Nice. Generally, they say the best time, the best time, uh, the mature age is around about 24, 24 years old. But does that mean I start to look at 24? No. Keep an eye out, as I said, uh, in youth meetings, in Sunday school, right? We're all brothers and sisters in Christ, as long as we look at each other in a pure way. And eventually, as I said before, the, the road will become narrow and narrow. So we find ourselves with this particular person, if it's God's will. The prayer of guidance is very important behind the Egbeya. Lord, now that you know that I'm about to look for my partner in life, how do I know if it's right unless you guide me with the grace? It's a very powerful prayer. When you use it, uh, it, it works great uh, miracles. Mm. And I guess there's also the fact that your brain hasn't fully developed in That's right. That's years. right. You know, That's you're true. going to change your mind that many times. 100%. 100%. But yeah, you want to make sure you're making the right decision. That's right. That's right. And un unfortunately, when if we if we choose to go out with a girl or go out with a guy um, and when I'm not ready and I force the door open to a relationship a lot of consequence a lot of hurt a lot of scars I can bear these scars for for for, for a long time so a hundred percent guaranteed when my relationship with Christ is forever growing and I do have the guidance of my confession father then you're going to find that it's not going to be so bad. It can wait until the time is time is right. I've often heard, um, you know, priests. I think even Pope Schnorder said it that you shouldn't be in a relationship for longer than two or three years before making the commitment to to be married. Mm. So it's kind of dangerous to commit yourself in your teen years because then it means you're going to be together for much longer there'll be more problems, you'll be more frustrated with each other on a few different levels. That's, that's very true. Like, um, uh, Sayyidina Baba is very wise in his, in his um, suggestions. All you can do, all the church can do they is to suggest. suggestions, yeah. Okay? And this is advice, advice given freely, mm -hmm. right? At the end of the day, you can make your own decisions, but most importantly, understand you could be 16 years old and the church in itself is 2,000 years old of experience. Annie, it's a wealth of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Go back to your confession, Father, and seek their advice yeah, before going into a commitment like this. The next question is on another relationship, I guess. Why did God not forgive Adam and Eve immediately when he is so forgiving? Uh, <laughs> God is, God is very forgiving mm -hmm. and God is very merciful. Um, what can we say? We can say that it truly disappointed him when Adam chose to uh, eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Uh, that covenant that he had between him, him God and, and man, was a, uh, one of the first covenants that God made. Uh, keep that promise, please. I give you everything, but please don't go to this particular area. It just shows that God has given man free will. Yeah. And you might even say he's more forgiving than we understand him to be just because he already knew Adam was going to commit this sin and let him and forgave him anyway, knowing that this was all going to happen. Mm, that's right, yes, yes. So I think that kind of shows mm. greater kindness, greater forgiveness right. than we understand. Mm, that's true, that's true. And, and actions speak more than what? Huh? 
woods. Woods, mm -hmm. and and we sh he showed us his 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 mercifulness, and he didn't he didn't send a prophet, he didn't send a saint, he didn't send anyone. Mm -hmm. He sent his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer for us on the cross. And the the cross in itself is a symbol of what love, isn't it? And love is what equates to sacrifice. Yes. And uh, we always tend to point the finger back to God and say, "You are so unfair. You're so unmerciful. You know, are you fair? Are you merciful? Are you compassionate to your brother or sister?" Right. From day to day, we we often uh, can, can, we often uh, break a commandment or two. Do we see? Uh, like, do we ever get hit by lightning or anything at all from God? God is very quiet, very merciful, but at the same time, when, it, when my brother or sister does something against me, then I'm the first to what? Huh? React. React. Mm -hmm. But uh, we should be a bit more sober in Shweya um, and understand His mercy endures forever. And I think something we always struggle with is us trying to equate our understanding with God. So, you know, while we might read that as being unforgiving initially, mm. You've got no idea what God's plan is, and you, part of being faithful is trusting that it's bigger than our understanding. It's, That's right. Yeah. Um, the next question is, when I came from Egypt four years ago, I faced the problem of how to make friends. At church, friends my age are cynical, critical, and manipulative. Outside church, friends are unchristian, worldly, and dangerous. How do I make friends in this new country? Sad one. Um, it all boils down to communication, mm -hmm. and don't let a uh, language be a barrier for you, because I'm sure it's that a well-written question. Uh, it is. It is. It <laughs> so is. So language isn't a barrier. And so, 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 yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> so, um, very importantly, associate with this, associate with people that are of positive influence mm -hmm. for you as a person. The best place would be the church itself, and get involved in different services. Right. Uh, I remember visiting one of the, uh, the uh, dioceses that belongs to Amba, Amba Ashaya in, in Tahta. Tahta, mm -hmm. that's right. And uh, Sayyidina had um, all his youth there and they, they had these little badges on them, Magdi or, or Claire or Yvonne, Faculty of uh, Medicine, Faculty of Engineering or whatever, whatever the faculty may be. But, we found that the group that came from Australia was able to associate with people that are from the same, what's the word, same um, academic background, mm -hmm. right? So you're coming with a title, you're coming with some knowledge. So when you come into uh, your church environment, when you get to know, obviously introduce yourself to Abuna, and Abuna then will ask you some questions and see what your background is, and then Abuna will try to connect you with people that are of uh, you yeah, have the same uh, understanding, same background as yourself. And that's the first step. So um, sometimes we become very, very patient. We want friends straight away. It doesn't happen that way. Get involved in the services. Make Orban with Orban, clean with those who are clean, and go with the youth uh, that are go out to the youth camps. And, and I'll tell you something, Yanni, yeah, be yourself. Yeah. Be yourself. And as I said before, even if your English is broken, but the, obviously the question is you raised is quite written, written quite well, uh, you are the one that can build the bridge between you and that person. Be genuine. Be genuine in the way you approach people. And most importantly, be, uh, have that communication between you and that person. I and read I, once that people are always, um, you know, searching or critical of the church because they're looking for a perfect church, but there's no perfect church because there are no perfect people. That's true. So maybe it's just a matter of finding people that you're compatible with. That's you, right. If it's not working out at your church, go to another one. Yeah, and you don't... Like give, still within... No, I mean still within like the Coptic Orthodox community. If give you Coptic, give yourself a chance. Don't move, don't hop and skip from one church to another. Yeah. Right? You, you don't stay there for a day. So I don't like this. Because and that's, that's a message for all of us in mm -hmm. the churches today. Yeah. Is that whenever you see someone new in the church... Welcome them. Welcome them. Yeah. Embrace them. It's not difficult. Right? And get them involved. In, 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 in Get them to know other people. It's like a, like a ship that's coming out from the, from the ocean. You know, it's coming to your shore. Mm -hmm. Anchor it. Don't anchor it to yourself only. Anchor it to two or three other people. 
uh, meaning that if you were for some reason to leave the church or go somewhere to another state for work, there's another person, Maggie or George or, or Joanna is going to take care of them and ask about them. So as soon as you see a new person, go and ask about, you know, yeah, introduce yourself to that person. Because when they're coming into the church, they feel, how am I going to be accepted? Yeah. You know, and, 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 uh, and as, as, as time progresses, uh, we don't have to go, uh, even in Egypt, but even t today we have inter, inter, inter um, like, like for example, we have uh, Australians marrying. Uh, oh, interracial uh, inter marriage. Inter interracial yeah. marriage, yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. And Nishkara Binayani, English is, not, English is now our first, first language, you know, and that breaks one of the first barriers. Mm -hmm. And all our liturgies and all our services are done in English. That's, that's another good thing. And uh, no, it's, it's, look, give yourself a bit of time. Give yourself a bit of time and it will work out. But connect yourself with the right people, okay? Abuna, youth leaders and the services of the church. You're bound to find someone there, mm -hmm. okay? And I guess you don't need like an army. You don't need a group of 20 people. Just one people. person. You just need one person. Just one person. Yeah. Just one person. That person will link you up to many other people. That's it. Okay. Next question is, my family is fighting all the time and I'm very troubled by this. What can I do? Uh, prayer is the key to all our problems. When we bring Christ in between us and the problem, it's always solved. Uh, the, fam the family altar is so important. That spare room, dedicated as a prayer room, uh, and, and at least that way you can stand up together as a family and, and pray together, even if it's the Our Father, or read one of the hourly prayers of the Igbeya. That's the first thing. So the nucleus of the, the house is that that, 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 that church, that small room you dedicated to Rabbina, or even that corner you've dedicated, or we stand up together as a family and pray. Uh, that's the first thing. Second thing is, Abuna needs to be involved. It's very nice to see Abuna come and visit. Sayyidina Baba always encourages us to always invite Abuna. Abuna irfa bukhur, you know, like to raise incense within the home. It's very important that uh, Abuna raises the incense and sprays the water, uh, house with water to allow the Spirit of God to be dwelling, not only in the hearts of the people, within the actual place itself. Uh, arguments always happen because of uh, assumptions and lack of communication. I think we need to understand that sometimes we communicate by SMS or even Facebook, you know, like it's amazing that sometimes people may communicate with their father or mother and they're in the same roof, you know, via SMS electronically. I'm just saying, put all this electronic stuff aside who is that half an hour family time? Sit down together and have a meal together. Mum, stop getting, sorry, no, all the mums are great. God bless them. <laughs> but uh, that home-cooked meal, we sit together as a family, we eat together. Now, even sometimes as family, we can share together and make the meal together. And that, that in itself allows communication discussion. Right? Arguments happen because of Rabbina Mushma Gutfil, God is not present in, in the scene. Uh, secondly, uh, we don't have um, good quality communication between us and, and, and my father, mother, my mum. Yeah. And, uh, and then the third thing is invite a buna, invite a buna into, your, into your lives, into your family, into your home. Um, and a buna from there will sit down with confession individually and sort out the issues. Look, um, uh, I feel, uh, look, I shouldn't say, uh, look, I, do I feel sorry for you? Just be patient. I can tell you, I can share with you a story just quickly that um, one young child, he was in year two, I think, and his uh, Sunday school servant said that anyone that drinks alcohol is going straight to hell, you know? And that child was bawling his eyes out. At the end of the lesson, the servant asked, well, what's wrong? Yani, why are you crying for? He says, well, you said that anyone that drinks alcohol is going straight to hell. Mum and dad always drink alcohol. So what do we do? He says, you've got to pray more and pray harder. So whenever you see that bottle being brought into the house, you need to go into your room and pray. So he went home and his dad bought the bottle of alcohol and placed it on the table. And then for some reason, it fell off the table. You know, it was a rocky table, not stable, whatever it may be. Uh, so the child at that time left, went into his room. 
And the wife said to her husband, look, don't worry, I'll clean it up, go and get another bottle. So he did. He went and bought the second bottle, it fell from the table, still that rocky table. The third time he says, if I ever, if that third bottle falls off the table, I'm not going to put a drop of what alcohol into my, into my mouth. What happened to the third bottle? Huh? It, it fell. And then the wife asked, where's your, where's, your, where's your son in all of this? I haven't seen him all night ever since you came home. And they went inside the room. They found this little boy kneeling next to his bed, praying with tears, tears being coming out of his eyes. And, and the tears have never befallen on the fall. They're always caught by, by Christ himself, our Lord God himself. He said, what are you crying for? He says, well, I'm crying because I don't want you to go to hell. He told you we're going to hell. <laughs> our Sunday school servant said, you're going to go to hell if you drink, drink alcohol. He says, and the father and mother started to cry because they were moved by the son's purity. That's yeah. right. And uh, you, can, you can pray for them and, and be a, a instrument of reconciliation between mom and dad. Don't get too involved with adult talk. Very important. Don't get, let them discuss their issues together. Don't get involved. Um, just more or less pray about it and, and, and uh, ask for the wisdom of the church and the fathers. Mm. So we've been given so many questions that unfortunately we can't get through um, all of them today. Buenos Surreal has been a blessing That's to have great. you. Thank great. you so much for coming. I'd like to congratulate uh, Abuna Bishoy, Alan Tony, and the team for putting uh, such a great effort in, in CYC. Uh, it's bettered by your presence. No, no, it's very nice to be here. Thank you very much for the invitation, and I wish you all the best for the glory of God's name. God bless Thank you, you so and much. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God. As always, we encourage you to keep sending in your questions to 0416 or write to us on Twitter at CYC Now, um, or head to Facebook and write to us at Christian Youth Channel. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll get to the rest of your questions next week. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. CYC Christian Youth Channel. CYC 